So here are the configurations you'll need. I'll do a conf t to get to global config mode, and I'm going to put in IP domain dash name for my router. I'll say the domain name is danscourses.com. All right, and next I'll configure IP space SSH version 2. So we're going to use SSH version 2. I need to create some RSA keys for using SSH. So what I'm going to do is I'll say crypto key gen and then hit the tab key generate RSA and hit enter. And how many bits in the modulus? I'll change it from the default of 512 to 1024 and hit return or enter. And so now we have some RSA keys built for our SSH configuration. I'm also going to need to create a user for the router. So I'm going to say username Dan Priv for privilege level, and I'll set it to 15, which is administrative complete access to the router. So username Dan, priv for privilege, 15, and then password Cisco. So that sets a user named Dan with the password Cisco. All right. Now what we'll need to do is configure the lines that are working with our HWIC 8A card. If I do a control C and go back to privileged user mode and I do a show line, you can see the lines that we have. Notice line 0, which is our console, our console connection. We have line 1, which is our auxiliary interface. And then we have these TTY lines. And notice it says 0 slash 0 slash 0, and then 0 slash 0 slash 1. And so these are the lines that are for our octal cable. Line TTY 0 slash 0 slash 0 all the way to 0 slash 0 slash 7 and notice the line numbers 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Well this corresponds to what we're seeing here when we see the 3 on line 0 slash 0 slash 0 and the 4 on line 0 slash 0 slash 1. So if you were wondering why is it 3, 4, and 5, well you can see that if we look at the the command line output here from our console connection to the router uh, that, well, line 0 is the console connection and line 1 is the auxiliary connection, so our TTY lines begin at 3 and go up to 10. So we can configure those now for this. So what I'll do is I'll say conf t to get back to global config mode, line 0 slash 0 slash 0 space 0 slash 0 slash 7. And I'll hit enter. And I'll say transport input all, and that will work for both SSH and Telnet if I do all. Or I could say transport input and put a question mark, and you can see the choices are all, none, or SSH, or Telnet. I'll just put in all so that we can test out both Telnet and SSH. And then I'll say login to login and then space local. So this will allow us to, uh, this will force the login to look to the local database on the router for the local database of users. And remember we created that username Dan with the password Cisco. So we'll hit enter, do a control C and a show run, and we'll verify that we have the things in the configuration that we need. We have our host name set, our user Dan, password Cisco, we have our SSH version 2. We have our domain name for this to work. We need a domain name for SSH to work. Um, we built our keys, which you can't quite see here in this uh, packet tracer output. Our interface is up. At, and if we go all the way to the bottom, line 0 slash 0 slash 0 to 0 slash 0 slash 7, transport input all, and login local. So we're ready to go and test this out. Okay, so I'll close the CLI window for the access server and let's test to see if we can now console in uh, using Secure Shell SSH from PC1 into R1, R2, or R3 through the 1941 access server 
with the HWIC 8A card and the octal cables coming off on these TTY lines, line 3, 4, and 5. To do this, all we need to do is open up PC1, open up our command prompt, and you can see here I have the command prompt. You can see PC. So we're in the PC. You can hit enter and change lines here. And the first thing we'll do is we'll get the format of our SSH client. So I'll type SSH and then space forward slash and a question mark. And it gives us the usage for the command. I need to use SSH and then dash L for login. Then I need to provide my username and the target IP address. So to be able to SSH and console in through SSH through our access server over to let's say R1, R2, or R3, what I'll do is I'll type SSH space dash L for login. My username, which is Dan, this is the username I created on the access server, and then I'll put a colon and then the number of the TTY line that I want to use. And we remember the first TTY line or line 0 slash 0 slash 0 was TTY 3 on the access server. So I'll put colon 3 and then the IP address of the access server. So I'm SSHing into the access server but then saying colon 3 to use TTY line 3 which should send me to R1. I'll hit enter and you can see we have an open. I'll put in my password Cisco and you can see I'm now into R1. You can see the command prompt says R1. So now I have a command line access to R1. All right. Now to get out of this command line access, it's a little bit of a chore. You can see if I exit, I'm still in R1. So to get out of it, I'm going to go back to the access server and I'm going to do enable and then clear line TTY3 and then hit enter and that should disconnect me from the terminal server. Now if I go back to this PC, you can see I have a PC prompt again. I can do the same thing and instead of colon 3 I'll put in colon 4 and it should connect me to R2. And you can see now I have R2. Once again I cannot exit out cleanly so I have to clear line TTY 4 and hit enter and now I should go back to the PC. Now I have a PC prompt and we'll try the last one SSH dash L for login Dan colon 5 for TTY line 5 and password Cisco and I'm in R3. So using one username for the access server and one login, I'm able to console into R1, R2, and R3 using these octal cables and this HWIC 8A card, which enables the router to be a terminal server. This is the same tool that's used in the NetLab to allow us to console into multiple devices, basically through the NetLab by means of a, a router with the HWIC 16A or 8A card and the octal cable coming off.